ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the very first episode of the Haas Pod. Welcome to Wrestling's Greatest Podcasts. I'm Aaron Presley. Going to be here with you every single week, along with some of my close and uh, personal friends at this point in time. Not only yeah, you got me here, you got Super Tex Brent McKenzie, a Texas wrestling legend. And Brent, how you doing here tonight? Uh, Aaron, I'm, I'm doing great tonight. Um, the Super Tex on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook. It's Super Tex Brent McKenzie. Um, uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to uh, be on this podcast with one of my absolute best friends, Aaron Presley, and one of my greatest opponents I've ever been in the ring with. Um, an absolute legend and a uh, just a just a great great man, Charlie Haas. Charlie, uh, I'm going to turn this over to you now, and I want you to introduce yourself to everybody that's listening. All the Haas holes uh, that are yeah. listening tonight on the Haas Pod. So, Charlie, the floor is yours. We look forward to hearing. All right. You. Well, we want to. Uh, I want to thank Aaron and Brent for making this happen. Uh, we this is something that we uh, were we're in talks about for a while, and we finally pulled the trigger, and we're we're going to make it happen. And. Uh, and so that leads me into the hostels. We asked, uh, we asked about two weeks ago, we were trying to hit our goal of 2,000 followers and likes. Um, we came close to that. But during that time, we held a contest for one of the, uh, you know, one of the people to come up with the name of our, for our listeners. And that, that name that showed up more than once was the hostels. So whenever we refer to you, the fans, you guys will be called the hostels. So hostel nation, baby. That's what we're looking for. And that's and, what we have. Uh, Charlie, let's go ahead and start that now. If, if, if you're listening to yeah. this podcast, hashtag hostel nation. I love it. I think that's something that we need to go forward with uh, from here on out. Hostel nation. So hashtag that. Whenever you mention the Hospod podcast, uh, wrestling's greatest podcast, hashtag whatever you're talking about with hashtag Hostile Nation. Hostile Nation. Yep. Hostile, Hostile Nation. Here it is. The birth of it. Today, October 31st, 2021, Halloween. It's the perfect time for it. So, uh, man, but I, I'm looking forward to this. This is, a, this is a venture in my pro wrestling career as well as yours, Brent and Aaron, for us to, like, uh, to bring all, all of our knowledge, everything we've experienced, us three together, um, and to, you know, to, be, to do something different than, uh, than the other podcasts that, that you know, concentrate on pro wrestling. We're going to concentrate on all the aspects of wrestling, from amateur to grappling to pro wrestling. And uh, I'm excited about that. Well, this is going to be an interesting uh, situation as we go forward, as we covered, like you say, Charlie, not only for the world of professional wrestling, but, but the world of amateur wrestling as well. And that so many professional wrestlers have roots in amateur wrestling and as well to uh, – to you know, just cover you know the world of professional wrestling from week to week and day to day and minute to minute right now is changing at an incredible rate. Uh, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan, and we just want to show and, and shine a, a very bright light on the world of professional as well as amateur wrestling. So, so much to look forward there, uh, and so many guests like uh, Charlie through your um, time in 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 amateur and professional wrestling. You you've had the opportunity to make so many incredible uh, connections and meet so many people. And, and that's one of the things that, that we will uh, examine as we go through here is we take a look back in time and talk to a lot of the coaches, uh, some of your teammates, as well as um, the, the who's who in, am, in the world of amateur wrestling today and, and professional as well. Right. Let me start off with this. And, and I'd like to close with this um, after every podcast. Uh, no matter whether it's pro wrestling or amateur wrestling, remember, um, both of those sports put you in uncomfortable positions. And, you know, when you start wrestling, when, it, when it's uncomfortable because you're trying to wrestle your way out of it. So um, that's, that's my motto. You know, it's, uh, you start wrestling when you're put into an uncomfortable position. So, you know, and Charlie, that, that not only just translates to, to, to wrestling, that translates to life in general. Exactly. Uh, and it, it does. So yeah, because you can take, you can take that, Motto, um, you take the worth that work ethic that you use to, uh, um, you know, to, to can hone your craft or teach you how to wrestle, but you can apply that on life, you know, um, and that could be whether it's death, taxes, divorce, um, you know, addictions, you know, we're always wrestling and it's, you know, and it could help us learn how to get out of those spots. So, Charlie, I got to ask, uh, looking back, can you recall the first time that 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 you recall your first encounter with amateur wrestling? Yes, uh, we, we just moved to Oklahoma, and I was a big pro wrestling fan since, like, the age of five. Uh, moved to Oklahoma, I was 11, and um, 
man, I, I, we got there in the summer. My, you know, and I, I was coming from New Jersey. I'm not New Jersey from uh, Washington, DC. My dad worked for the government. So we got, we got moved out to, uh, he got stationed out in, D, in uh, Oklahoma. And, uh, you know, I grew up, you know, playing soccer. And that was my, my sport that I loved. Um, but I was a big wrestling, you know, fan, pro wrestling fan. So my parents were like, we got the, we got the, uh, student handbook and we're going through all the sports that, that, uh, the middle school or, uh, Sequoia junior high middle school had, and I was looking at it and they had wrestling. So I'm like, man, I'm going out for wrestling. Like, all right. You know, I come so you sign up in October, you know, be there for the first practice starts in. And I got there and it was, uh, I was so excited, rode the bus over there to where the practice was, went into the room and, and uh, it was an amateur wrestling mat. No ring, no ropes, and I was so disappointed. And, uh, yeah, and, that, and that's a true story. So disappointed. Um, you know, we didn't have YouTube. We didn't have all that stuff back then. I mean, I just saw, hey, we're having wrestling try tryouts. You know, come sign up first. Be a part of the Edmund Bulldogs. I'm like, yeah. And uh, so it was amateur wrestling. But, uh, you know, I, the coach talked me into staying, and I, and, you know, I took, some, took a lot of bumps, a lot of lumps. And, uh, man, I, was, I sucked for the first two years. But. And once it clicked, it got better. So it's just like it, pro wrestling. You know, you got to stick with it. So, Charlie, that, that would bring me to my next question then. You know, that was your first uh, encounter with amateur wrestling. Do you recall the first time you ever laid your eyes on professional wrestling? Was it on TV? Was it in person? Uh, it was, was on a magazine? Yeah. So it was on TV, and this was uh, before cable. And it was um, – and I, I remember actually – it, we just got cable and I mean, it just came in and, uh, and, and before that people are listening. We only had three channels. You had NBC, ABC and uh, CBS. And then I, you had UHF and that was either the U or the channel 13. And, um, but we just got cable and I saw my first wrestling match pro match on, um, I forget which channel it was on, but it was WWF world wrestling federation. Vince McMahon was the announcer. Um, the dad, Vince Senior, he was the promoter, and it was Jimmy Fly Super Snuka. He was refusing the managerial service of Lou Albano, and Lou Albano did not like it. Um, so on play on uh, what do you call it? It was on um, Nature Boy Buddy Rogers Corner. Buddy Rogers, he uh, he Superfly turned down Lou Albano's uh, offer, and he went to Buddy Rogers and said. Buddy, I want you to be my uh, mentor and my manager. And Buddy said, I definitely will. And as Superfly Jimmy Slicka was making his way to the ring, he was jumped by Lou Albano and Ray the Crippler Stevens. They beat him down with his, his beads that J Jimmy always wore, beads from his uh, native, native uh, you know, island, which was the Fiji Islands. And um, they beat him down, and he was a bloody pulp. Not only did they beat him down then, they gave him not one, but two pile drivers on the cement. And blood was everywhere. The big X was going up. People, please take your kids and have them turn away from this. And I mean, and Jimmy Snooker was doing the electric shake shock with his leg and he couldn't move. And I mean, the next, the next week I was hooked. The next week I had to watch it. They brought him out and he was on the, he was on the corner, played with Buddy Rogers corner. And he had the big neck brace and a halo around that was tied into his head. And it was, uh, man, that got me hooked. So, so Charlie, that, that would bring me to this then. Uh, you know, one of the, the topics that, that we will cover a lot moving forward is, is your older brother, Russ. So when, yeah. when you and Russ were, were little bitty kids, how long did it take y'all <laughs> before y'all were like Russ and Chucky to where y'all were tearing up furniture and wrestling? And it took, uh, it wasn't long at all. Like, uh, they had a king size bed. So, I mean, we were, they were like Russ and Chuck's size, you know? And, uh, so we were doing, we were doing, we were, we were, everything we saw on TV, we'd mimic and, uh, and we would try to do drop kicks. Um, and thank God they didn't have power bombs in her chronos end because there's no telling we probably, but, um, we we're doing like power slams and pile drivers. But, uh, I remember we broke the frame of the bed and the thing was like, at a, it was at, it's like buying a three legged table and just it fell, you know, on the one corner and we're like, Oh shit, what do we do? So we were able to, and, and, the, and back then these frames was a metal frame. It was just two like metal po four metal posts that were really, that were, there was just, that were barely, you know, so what do you call, um, barely, I don't know, put together. It was, um, welded on. It was barely welded on. And, um, I guess we were just jumping so much that the one post just came out, right. It didn't break, but it bent backwards. Okay. Um, so we were able to pull it to where it was straight again, put the mattress back on. And, um, so we just left and we, and we didn't tell us anything to our mom and dad. So I think, um, 
man, maybe about later that day or later, so that was during the day later that night i remember my dad getting home from work and he uh, went to sit down on the bed and uh, take his untie his shoes as soon as he did that thing snapped and he fell down and he's like god damn it noreen these these pieces of shit bed frames i am tired of it so they ended up sleeping <laughs> with just the so i mean for the for the rest of our time in virginia they just slept on a box spring with a mattress we oh, never told no. them that we, we never told them that we broke it we just so we, we just agreed with dad that there was a piece of shit bed frame that they bought so <laughs> so well, i'm happy to i'm happy to know that that my mom if when she hears this she'll know i wasn't the only one that destroyed all of her furniture yeah. so well, there you I, go mom honestly that that takes me back to to being a kid and just doing stuff that you weren't supposed to do do. right right and and like either your parents finding out or your siblings snitching you out i that that happened to me so many times with my older brother i just oh, yeah. snitched out so it, it really just takes me back i just had a bunch of memories just 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 no, know, rolling man. in on that so i i think that's that's pretty relatable to to everyone's childhood right you know you're yeah. a kid and you're, and you're trying to emulate stuff you've seen on tv and something goes wrong and yeah. like oh shit yeah it was like uh, it's like um you're 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 uh your enemies but then as soon as something breaks or there's a hole in the wall you're the best of friends trying to make you fix it <laughs> absolutely so, i mean it's like you know i was like damn man you know so yeah but good times man and i mean and then as, as this thing grows uh man we'll pull up uh matches of russ and i and we'll pull up of uh i'll tell you the stories behind it i mean I got stuff from um, that you know that I know we started posting like Russ, the Haas brothers versus the Briscoe brothers, and I'm talking about the infamous Briscoe brothers down there at ROH. Um, and so um, we were their first match, and uh, we're the ones that broke them in. So we got we were able to find uh, videos of that. And, uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to you know Russ isn't here, but I'm able to carry on his legend, uh, his uh, his name and his um, spirit, and uh, you know, and you'll see that especially when you see uh, my son Russ out there wrestling. So. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that uh, that brings me to this as well. Um, right now, the boys are just really setting the, the world on fire, so to speak. And uh, from their, their YouTube channel to get an opportunity to learn in front of a crowd and, and do some wrestling all over the state of Texas, from Texoma down to San Antonio, um, the boys are really coming along. And how does that feel for you? Uh, to see like the second coming of the hospitals. Well, you know, it's a, uh, one, it's, I'm blessed. I really am. I got, I got four great kids. Um, and although, you know, Jackie and I are divorced, uh, we're great parents. Um, we co-parent better. And, um, you know, they've been through a lot and, um, you know, they, you know, I, I really, this is, this is crazy. Cause I, I really, when I, I was out of amateur wrestling, when they were born and they're over the age to get into it, I got really got back into amateur wrestling and I, I really, I put, when I get into something, I put all, I just, I dig in deep and I, and I go all out. So I was really into, you know, learning to coach, learning to be a better coach, really putting a lot of pressure on them to perform. Um, that I really, I stepped away from pro wrestling and I never really, I never wanted to put them into it. Um, I never expected what is happening now to take off. And uh, I mean, man, I was retired up to a year ago. Uh, Robert Langdon got me out of it. And then uh, James Beard was with Robert. They talked me into doing the SWE thing. And, uh, you know, I got, I, I'm not going to lie. I got hooked back into pro wrestling. But the whole time that I was out of it, they've been watching pro wrestling. Um, and uh, they've been, I mean, when I talk about watching it, like they would, I mean, when their phones are supposed to be shut off at night, they're instead of, you know, sneaking a, on the phone to talk to a girl, they're sneaking on the phone to watch pro wrestling. And um, it shows because, um, I guess the, the philosophy now is like I'm, I'm teaching them now about the pro wrestling, but I'm I don't I'm not teaching them the moves. They know all the moves. They do the moves better than I could ever do it, and that's because they they're a fan of it. But so what I'm doing is I'm teaching them, and Rodney Max helping me teach them um, is the psychology and what the true meaning of pro wrestling to be a worker, and that is the work between the moves, and that is what that I think that you know I'm blessed with having two great athletes, but for them to pick it up and understand it. Like I said, the reason why they have really is because they've been fans of it since they were little. And they've only been living for nine and 11 years. Um, but what they do, I mean, when you, I mean, I'll be honest with you. And it's not because they're my kids. They have it. And, I mean, what I mean by they have it, they have the timing, the spacing, the psychology. They get it. And uh, it's, that's hard to teach. And that's hard to teach someone that's fully grown and where their mind's almost fully developed. You know, it's, it's hard to teach. And, and uh, you know, if people understand what I'm talking about, 
please, we were posting the videos of their matches. Um, they had one last night um, on, on October 30th, and you'll see what I mean. And I, I get a lot of reviews, man, and they're better than the kids on TV, you know. So we'll, we'll see, man. This is an experiment. Um, we'll see how it goes. So, well, Without a shadow of a doubt, the, the boys have it. Um, do you remember the first time that they – realize that so to speak that the light went on for them that that dad did this on a, a very high level and that that wasn't an everyday thing yeah i remember um the first day I, I, yeah I, I, well let's see I, I think they realized it when uh i was coming home from work i was uh I was working in um, the medical field i was doing i was a spine rep and uh opened the garage door and there are we have you know i have three different type size ladders it was a big house uh i have this 20 foot ladder the side of tilt 12 foot ladder that is on the ground and the six foot ladder that's turned like turned on its side. And, um, and I look closely and there's an amateur wrestling mat that we had rolled out. So that was the, uh, that was the in place of the ring, but there is the WWE tag team title belt that I had after, uh, we beat at the Guerrero's Shelton and I hanging from the top of the garage. They were having a TLC match and that, and I, the thing is, that belt was in the shadow box in my office. So I was like, well, <laughs> something happened. And so I opened the door and I go, Russ, Chuck, get down here right now. And Jackie goes, Charlie, relax. They were only having a TLC match. I saw your TLC match on TV. And I go, I, they have tons of other belts they can use. I go, I bought them every other belt that Russ came down. Finally. He goes, yeah, but Dad, they're not the real ones. So we wanted, to, we wanted the real TLC belts. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> they're still, like those are like... You know, and I think that's when they realized what I did or what I did at the time, what I used to do. Um, and they didn't know it was at such a high level. But, uh, you know, those those belts were shadow boxing. Like, that was that was like my trophy, my, you know, my memorabilia. And to them, it was just like, that's eh, just another belt, man. Let's just use the real ones that dad used. And uh, they didn't have it, you know. So that's when I realized, you know what, I think I, I, I turned them on to something that they probably, that it's going to be a long road. And it's going to be fun. There's going to be some ups and downs. But uh, right now we're having fun, and and I think that's what's different about it than with the amateur the amateur wrestling. I'm just letting them be them, you know. I'm like I don't I, we don't we aren't going every day uh, to practice, you know. I teach them when we have access to the ring, which I never had growing up. Um, another story I knew that I'll tell you, and Aaron, you know this. We were down at uh, Stewie's farm, and he has uh, he has he has the uh, the Texas 360 ring down there in his. Uh, I don't even know. It's not even a garage. It's like a warehouse or whatever. And uh, right. so we were sleeping out there for Russ's birthday this past June. And I mean, at two in the morning, I'm, I'm sleeping out there and I, I hear bam, bam, bam. I mean, I thought it was either a tornado came, came through uh, <laughs> or, or we were getting, someone was breaking in and it was, or someone hit us with the, I mean, so he hit the side of the, the, the warehouse with the truck. I mean, it was, it woke me up and scared the shit out of me. And, um, and it's Russ and Chuck and Russ's buddy, Ollie, they're in the ring wrestling, like 2.30 in the morning, and they're doing spots. And I mean, like, man, leapfrog, spot, uh, sunset. I'm like, I, I wanted to get mad at him, but I'm like, how can you get mad at him? I mean, if you had access to a pro ring at that age, we'd be doing the same thing. Dude, so I was I like, you know, let him be kids. Ring, I would have been in that ring 12 hours a day. You I know. You would have been able to pull me out of it. Dude, it is. Uh, so I'm like, right there in there, I'm like, this is what they really want to do. So, you know, I'm, so if I can coach them and help them, guide them, to, to do what I didn't do, then we're, then we'll be off. We'll be good to go. Is there a, if they were to show their friends, like you say, they got a new buddy that comes over and they wanted to show what, who their daddy is and uh, you weren't around, what would be the match? What would be what they would go to on YouTube to show their friends uh, who their dad is? I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, that's good. I mean, I mean, there's there's so many. Um, uh, I, I I tried to introduce them to me and Uncle Russ's matches. Um, they were, they were hard to find once I, once I got I drilled down. Um, so I, I bookmarked them so they can they, they, so they can hear my Uncle Russ talk. They never met him before, so they can hear what he sounded like. They, they can watch what you know how athletic he was and the stuff he did and what how they we worked as the Haas brothers or that before there was a world's greatest tag team or team angle there was the Haas brothers. Um, and then they you know I'd probably have them watch. Um, Shelton's and I's, uh, you know, WrestleMania match, you know, with what had been while Rhino and the Guerrero's in it, um, where we, we were successful there. Um, and, and the Ring of Honor stuff with the Kings of Wrestling or uh, the, or the, 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 where, the Wolves, you know, Davey Richards and, uh, and um, Eddie Edwards. Um, or I would have them 
you know, I pretty much, um, they like, they were following the SW stuff all the time, you know, all the time there when, when I was, when I was a uh, champion and, uh, you know, I think that right there, I think will stick out the most for me because they were part of that. And they were, that's when they were really good in the ring, learning to work all that, st- you know, the style. Um, so there's a couple of matches I'd hope they'd see. Um, there's a bunch, there's a bunch of stuff I hope they don't see. So, I mean, <laughs> so we'll see. Charlie, what would it mean to, uh, to you and, um, to Jackie, if, if when the time comes one day that, that say you see Russ and Chuck on, uh, on WrestleMania, well, just like, just like you were. Here is what, here is what, um, uh, this is, this is where man, I think it'd be great. And I, I think it can happen and I'm going to tell you why. And, um, I mean, I, you know, until it really hit me that, that, you know, pro wrestling, I mean, there's a lot to know about pro wrestling. It takes a long time to finally get it. And they're like, and people don't understand that. Um, it, it, it takes a lot. But what we don't do is, and, 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 I, and I'm, I'm gonna, I may be the first person to do this. We don't, you know, we don't take little kids or, you know, little kids that want to be, every little kid wants to be a pro wrestler. They, they, all, they love it, man. They want to be a John Cena you know, whatever, but there's no one out there teaching those little kids how to be a pro wrestler. Now, granted, they say, you know, well, that, that's, well, why would you teach them that? The, the, the concussions, the, the, uh, you know, the injuries. Well, you know what? You get concussions and injuries and in little league football, peewee, you know, or say, I'm sorry, little league baseball, peewee football, little league hockey, lacrosse. I mean, these kids are taking jolts to the head, their neck. I go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change I'm going to change the face of wrestling, man. And I'm going to show it with my kids. And believe me, I'm not putting their, them at risk. I'm not using them as a test tube dummy or a, 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 t- a throwing dummy. What I'm doing is I'm going to show you that if you want to be a pro wrestler, if you find the right person that's been there and knows what it takes to get there, if you give me – and it's just like anything else. They sign up, and we, it's going to be seasonal, and we teach these kids the timing. We teach them the psychology. We teach them the moves, the counters, the counters to the counters. I mean, it's just like I do for amateur wrestling. I mean, dude, you're not a great – it doesn't take – it may take six, seven years to you become a great amateur wrestler. You know, it should take about six, seven years for you to become a good pro wrestler. And that's if, you know, and that's if you're able to do it. Because by the time, you know, they have it now that you have to be – you know, some states you have to be 18 in order for the commission to allow you to perform. All right, well, that's fine. But so by the time I'm 18 till I'm 25, I got that. I got, I got to learn all that, cram all that knowledge and all that psychology and all those different styles in my brain on top of learning, you know, paying school loans off, paying bills. And what if I started doing this when I was a kid and I was having fun and then like the other sports and then, you know, through high school and all that, and come 18, 19, man, go pro. Or by the time I'm 23, I'll go pro like you do, like when you're baseball and football. I mean, because I had all these all this experience to – to you know, to that I put in my back pocket so that when I needed it, I pulled it out and said, "Yeah, I remember doing this." Or, "Yeah, this is the technique I learned," and that's what get, gets you to the dance. They don't, they haven't done that yet. No one, I mean, it has not been done in pro wrestling. And I'm telling you right now, um, I talked to Randy Orton about that, and he told me, he goes, "Charlie, the only way I learned is I went to my grandfather's wrestling, I went to my dad's wrestling, and he goes, and I watched, and I watched, and I watched, and he goes, and I got signed right, you know, young when I, and he, and he was, I was down at OBW when they signed him." And I remember when it clicked. I mean, and when I mean it clicked, I'm sitting there going, this, this, this mother, I mean, Randy should be on TV right now. There's no reason. He's better than anyone on TV right now. Oh, he's and, the uh, best there is right now. He's the best, and right now, best and I'm talking TV. about even then when it clicked. And I mean, and I tell Russ and Chuck, I go, watch Randy Orton. Watch Randy Orton. And so I'm not saying just watch it because he does an RKO. But I mean, I can see Russ, my son now. He watches Randy, and then he'll start walking like him in the rain, just real slow and like real. And I'm like, dude, you know, and so – that's what, that's what you want to teach. You know, that's the hardest thing to teach. The hardest thing for me to learn was the timing, was the, uh, the spacing, you know, that understanding that if you're going too slow, that that's the right speed for television. And you know? the, so. the thing about Randy is, is everything he does is deliberate. Yeah. So oh, there, there's yeah. a reason for, for everything that he does. And it, it's, the old, it's the old saying, you know, there's no wasted motion. Well, Randy Orton is the prime example of no wasted notion. So if you can emulate what Randy Orton is doing, then you are on the right track. You're exactly um, right. He's right. the total package when it comes to 
to a professional wrestler. He's got the look. He, he knows exactly what he's doing in the ring, and, and he dictates what he, what he wants to do in the ring just by the way he moves. Uh, he's, exactly. It's, it's, he's just he's the personification of a professional wrestler. So if you're trying to, 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 uh, to uh, recycle that, that's exactly the guy that you want, you want to follow. Yeah. And then that's it. That's so even today, like when I, I'll watch his stuff and, and it's not for the moves. Like I said, I, I watch his stuff so I can I'm like, all right, man, I want to try this. So I, okay, I saw how he set this move up. Why? And I, and I try to fi- I try to follow the why. And that's what I try to emulate. And I try to, I, I, when I, I'm like, you know, but then I, but I, I, I put the difference between Mandy and I is I, I'll take his smoothness, his style and uh, his deliberation. And I add Arn Anderson's, uh, his viciousness and the reason on Arn Anderson's technique to it. And, that, and that's what I do. And that's, um, so that's the psychology. So I'll take, uh, you know, Randy's ruthlessness and, Ar- and Arn's, uh, you know, his psychology. And, and that's what I try to make it to my own. And um, that's what I want the kids to know. I want them to learn. Um, and, and as they get older, I'll bring other people in, like, you know, to work with them. Like, you know, um, you know, Shelton, um, Kurt, um, you know, Rodney, or, you know, Booker team, whoever, you know, that's one, one thing that they, you know, that they never had, I never had, is I didn't know how to get into pro wrestling. I, we didn't have anybody that was a pro wrestler, a fan, that, uh, or anybody that knew anybody that was. Um, you know, my, my, my boys do. Am I going to give them the opportunity to meet them? Damn right. I'm going to give them every opportunity because there's a lot of good second generation baseball players and football players out there that, and the reason why they're that good is because their dad gave them that opportunity. So yeah, I want to take them to take advantage of it. You know, well, you know, I'll say this, Charlie, every, like every time I was in the ring with you, like it, it's not like the, the first couple of times you, you were testing me, right? Like, yeah. so every, you, you like, just god damn you laid everything in and you were like i'm trying to and it felt like you were just trying to bring it out of me mm-hmm. and and i think yeah i feel like you eventually did <laughs> yeah i feel like that's 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 why we became we yeah. became good friends yeah and but it was a teaching moment every time i was in the ring with you and i feel like that's that's what's so awesome about russ and chuck having you as their dad is that you were going to teach them all this stuff uh, that that you know and they're just going to, because they're little sponges right now, man, yeah, the yeah. that, that they're at, they're little sponges and they're going to take all of that in and they're going to become just little machines. I mean, they're already right. machines as far as the right. amateur wrestling goes, but with professional wrestling, these, these kids are going to be so seasoned when, when they start, when they start actually having matches against other people, yeah. they're going to, the, their opponents are going to be absolutely blown away. So yeah, they're going to be, uh, yes, yeah, so they're going to end up being the teacher. And, uh, Absolutely. Yes. And, and, and so what? What you know? What? What I have? Uh, what? So with the, with what I'm gonna what I'm building with these kids, I'm building this junior wrestling association. And you know, I they will not wrestle outside the ring, and they won't go off the top rope. Um, no, no spine busters or power bombs. Nothing that's gonna be a whiplash motion. Right. Um, and then and everyone that's a coach or that'll be part of this uh, this group, they will be you know USA certified. They will be trained in a concussion protocol first aid, um, CPR. So th- these kids will be protected. Uh, we're women wrestling as well. There'll be women wrestlers on hand to train. Um, and so, you know, it's, um, it's going to be, and, and this is perfect time for women to be wrestlers too. They're making more money than the guys. I mean, Absolutely. There, there's Absolutely. so much talent out there. So um, it's great that this can happen, but um, with Russ, I'm really in Chuck. Um, what I, what I've been doing is when they wrestle in a, in a match in front of a crowd, um, I'll have – I'll second Russ or I'll second Chuck, and I'll have somebody else that has experience or that's been at their my level um, or someone that just knows the business that I trust, and they will second the other brother out. And what, and what I mean, and you guys will – everyone will learn as the, the hostile nation learns. Um, that's really big in Japan. Um, when, when someone is wrestling out there, uh, like say like a Muda or a Chono um, or a uh, Tanahashi, um, they are seconded by – either a mentor or by somebody equal to them so they can coach them during the match. Say, hey, you know, and what I mean by that, like, you know, slow down or, you know, for, the, for what I mean by for the kids, I'm like, Russ, slow down, slow the speed down, um, you know, lay it in, you know, work the hold, Chuck, work the hold. So we're able to coach them out there and they're listening to us, but we're letting them do the match, but they're listening. So over time, you know, they'll say, you know what, Dan, I think we got this on our own. 
But, and, and, and that's another way, you know, I, I wish that when I was training, when I first started, I got to have an Arn Anderson walk me to the ring and then call to me, Charlie, slow down. Hey, Charlie, it doesn't look, lay it in. Hey, you know, fight up, you know, this is the time to fight. All right, sell, stay down, stay down, you know, you know, stuff like that. And, you, you know, know, Charlie. To, to you saying that, I've, I'm kind of finding myself in a, in a similar situation. Uh, yeah, at Metroplex. Uh, with, with Metroplex Wrestling, there's a kid that I'm, that I'm helping manage, but I'm also coaching this, this kid from the ring while he's yeah. out there doing what he's doing. And it's, exactly. and so with you saying that, it, it, it can do nothing but help. Nothing um, but help, I, right. I feel, like, I feel like this kid that, I, that, I'm, that I'm helping manage, his name's Casey Clay. Um, he's, uh, he's one of their, their mid-tier champions right now. Yeah, but he's 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 still pretty green. He hasn't really worked anywhere else, but and and he's learning. And having me out there because I've you know I've got some experience and yeah. I don't try to I don't try to put that over on anybody or anything like that. But I, I know what I'm doing, and to to be able to help coach him from ringside is really gratifying. So to to have someone out there is tremendously helpful. Um, and uh, so when, when the kids get to that point, man, that's going to be really cool to watch and, and to see them impart knowledge on other people um, and, and for them to take in the knowledge. Uh, yeah. So I, I really look forward to, to seeing Russ and Chuck grow and blossom in, into really good professional wrestlers because once, once they get it and, 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 like, once everything slows down for them, because you get to that period – and I know you've probably experienced it. I've experienced it. You're in a wrestling ring, and it's a million miles an hour. But once you hit that moment, you know exactly when everything has slowed down. And it's yeah. just everything is slow motion. And you you're, are, right. you're four thoughts ahead of what you're about to do. You know, guys, that, that brings me into a, to a question I'd like to ask. And it, it, it goes for both of you. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, in a situation like you're talking about, and you're out there kind of coaching them and being there uh, to support as well. Do you remember each of you that time, uh, Brent for you and then Charlie for, for you and Russ at that time, where that first time that light bulb got switched on and someone opened your eyes to a new way of thinking? So for me, um, man, this was, this was several, several, several years ago. I was in San Antonio. Uh, it was a little independent show. I think it was um, uh, it was like Warriors for Price Wrestling. It was something. It was a church show, and I remember being in the ring, and uh, we got to a point in the match, and I hit something, and I came up, and it was like there was just this this wave that overcame me, and I remember thinking, "Oh, this is it." Okay. It was just like everything was running in slow motion. And, and you, 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 you hear about uh, from other athletes, whether it's professional football or, or basketball or everything, time slows down. And that's, I, that's when you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and it was, it, was a, it was a match against Jess Willie. And I, and I can't remember the specifics, but I do remember that moment where it was just, aha. You know, it was like that. It was like the light bulb going off. I get it. And from then on, everything it, it's 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 from from that point forward, it felt like everything was coming more naturally to me. Um, um, Brent, th th that would bring me to this. And before we get get to Charlie and his experience, um, I would like to ask, where were you? Like, what was your first experience with professional wrestling? Is that something that, that you encountered early in your life, or was, is that something that maybe came around during your teenagers? So, so like, um, as uh, growing up, you know, I was born in the 80s. Um, so, you know, your major, uh, everyone knew who Hulk Hogan was, right? And um, I'm not saying that I was a huge Hulk Hogan fan, but I knew who he was. And, uh, my parents were not big on professional wrestling at all. And it was always, oh, know, fake bullshit, blah, 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 you know. And that, that was kind of the mindset I had. Um, but then when I was about 12 or 13 years old, and this was looking at around 96, 97, when wrestling got really, really hot again. Um, and it was the NWO, and then we were going into the Monday Night Wars. And that's really when I started, started watching it again because I, it wasn't necessarily – 
the stories or even even the matches themselves that really hooked me because I knew what professional wrestling was, right? And I, I was smart to it. My thing was I wanted to know how these guys were doing this night in and night out. You know, the, so the athleticism uh, drew me in because they were doing some really cool stuff. And But I wanted to figure out how in the hell they were doing this. And because I knew it was taking a toll on our bodies. I knew it wasn't easy. I knew, I, I knew the ring wasn't a, a trampoline per se. Um, so I admired that quality of professional wrestling. I wanted to know, I wanted to know how in the hell these guys were going out there and doing it every single night and putting, putting their bodies on the line. So that's really what, what piqued my interest and made me, made me want to, to look into professional wrestling again. Um, so 96, 97, that's, that's around the time I, I really got into to professional wrestling again. Um, yeah. Uh, I remember uh, you were talking about what, sorry, my phone, uh, you were talking about, um, when did it, when did you realize it clicked, um, for you? Um, I think mine was, I think, it, man, I'll be honest with you, man. It was after I left WWE and, uh, it was probably Brent. It was probably around the time you and I started feuding at Robert Langdon's down there, Texoma Pro. Oh, wow! <laughs> and I think it was. And, and I'll tell you. I'm going to tell you why. Because, um, and, and this is where I, I tell people and I preach to them. Um, you want to find a promotion, and I was working with uh, Robert Langdon to find that promotion um, where you're only working in front of about sixty to hundred people, and I and I and I relay it to uh, watching. The WTBS, Gordon Soli, 605 to 805, that small studio. You only had about 40, 50 people in there. Right. And, but the four horsemen, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, um, Ric Flair, Ole Anderson, Barry Wyndham, whatever the fourth person you want to put in that dimension, that dynamic, they were able to make you believe they were whipping someone's ass. But then they talked to you on how to buy the ticket, and they would go from that 60-person studio and fill the Omni with 10,000 right. people. Um, and so I think it was, man, it was definitely working for Robert where I was like, holy shit, man, like if you want to make this work, you got to make sure your punches and your kicks look good, and you better, you got to interact with the fans. And not only that, you got to be able to, man, and that's why I, I, it's like you got to learn to call it on the fly. And I, my best matches – whether it was with Jerome Daniels, with Brent McKenzie, whether it was Mike Fox, whether it was, uh, you know, uh, Tim Storm or uh, APOC, whether, whatever it was there, it was, I never called it upstairs. We went out, we felt the crowd. Um, I said, whatever, just make sure your punches and kicks look good because we're going to go, we're going to go for a walk. When we go out there, I want the fans to believe we're really hitting each other. And uh, they did. And, uh, but I was also to think on the fly. I could see what I had, what fans were there. I was also able to. I was really able to also see um, how to bring the ref into the match, and that's yes. something I, I always I believe in. I think, um, and man, this last run with the SWE, I you know I was telling Aaron um, and I was telling Rodney earlier that man, I just feel like it started to click the last three or four years. Like I finally got it. Like I finally got what Arn Anderson told me. He said, Charlie, if you quit worrying about all the moves. And just worry about the work in between the moves, then you'll get it. And I think that I finally finally clicked. So I completely agree with that. Um, what's what's it, but what's crazy to me is like you were you know you were in you were in that WWE system for so long, yeah. and, it, and it took you getting away from that to finally to to feel like you were figuring it out. And man, well, I like my favorite like some of my favorite matches have been with you, and yeah. uh, I, and, and to your point, saying. Stop calling everything beforehand and just get out there and walk and talk. I found that those types of matches for me have been my favorite matches. And there were a couple of times where you and I had worked and we we had, we talked about everything that we were going to do beforehand, and we got out there in the ring and it wasn't what we wanted. Totally to Totally different. Do. I know. And 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 what a, what a lot of younger wrestlers coming up don't understand is yeah you can go out there and you can do all these super cool moves. And be athletic as hell, but if if you're not listening to how the crowd is reacting, all of that all of that means absolutely nothing because you're just doing cool moves. And yeah, they're gonna pop for those moves, but those five to ten seconds after that, they don't give a shit. 
and, and so being able to go out there and call it in the ring is is it, it means that you're telling a story and you're reacting to how the crowd is responding and then that way you can grab that crowd and you can direct them to where you want to go rather than just going out there and putting on a show um, and and that's one thing that I, that I appreciated about you is we eventually we got to where you and I you and I were comfortable enough with each other that we could go out there and not have to not have to, to had to have talked about anything other than what we want to do at the start and what we want to do at the end. And then we just went out there and fucking worked and a part of the language. But those are the types of matches that I appreciate the most. And I, and I've had some of the most fun times in the ring with you. So, and that's, yeah. that's, that's, uh, I mean, I, I call it, I call it, I call it making Shakespeare. Maybe we're shape, we're going out to tell a story. Um, and you absolutely. don't know what is because I mean, in, in the kid, we got to have A through Z. No, you don't because you don't know what the crowd's like. Yeah. You don't know the match before you or the three or four or say your main event. And that rest of that crowd, I because like this is what happens today is wrestling. And, I, and I'm not putting anyone down. Everybody wants, they don't listen to the promoter. They don't understand that the card is a story. Absolutely. Each person on that card, each match tells a story and the, and the card is the story. Even in that, Charlie, though, a lot of the bookers who are putting the card together don't understand that the card is no. a story. So, when, you know, your first match is a five minute match, popcorn, yeah. you know, boom. It's a, baby face goes over, you get the crowd right. You, know, you set the tone for the evening. So, what happens, you, and I've seen it, and I saw it at Ring of Honor. Hey, man, you guys got five minutes opening match. Fuck them. I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them what I have. And they'll go out and do 20 minutes. Yep. Well, by the time you get to the main event, it's three, four hours into the show, you killed the crowd. Your crowd is there dead. Is no, yeah. Um, no one goes back and says, hey, man, what's what's the finish? Everyone does want to do wants to do the same thing that they see on TV. What's the hottest thing? Um, everybody wants to use a finish as a as a hope spot or a cutoff. Like, you know, um, nobody and, – and you know what? And, and I'm not putting one down, but I'm, I'm giving people advice. Um, I appreciate your athleticism, and I appreciate you wanting to do those moves and be the best that we want to be. But in order to do that – you have to know the psychology and know when and where to put it. You know, you may be you may be a great quarterback and throw the ball, 80, you know, eighty yards, and you, you and you can drop it on a dime. But do you know when to use that play to get it in there? Do you know, you know how to you know? Do you know what it takes like for a you know that two minute drill to get down there and score? I mean, it's like you gotta learn that you're you gotta learn your craft. You gotta know when. So you know, and like you know, it's when you know that's when it really clicked for me. When I'm like, you know what? Arms right, man. You know, it's not the moves; it's the work in between moves. And so, when after Russ died and after Shelton and I, we they broke, they split us. Man, I was a solo. I was solo, and I got lost. And I was a deer in the headlights because I worried about okay, I've never been a babyface. So what, what? What do I do in a comeback? What? What am I? How am I going to get the crowd excited? You know, I can't do a four fifty. I can't do anything off the top rope. I, I, I wrestle, but I mean, they already got Kurt Angle. What are they going to do? I mean, like, I, dude, I was so worried and walking around eight shows. When I was a tag team, I felt like I am now. I, I mean, I, I knew Sean and I, we put in the time, Arm trained us, even with my brother, we were the best in the world. But when it came to singles, dude, I, I was fucking dead. It went from being top card, being a team angle, being at WrestleMania, to where I was, I, it showed. And it showed my personality. And then I was walking on eight shows and I wasn't very successful in the singles career with, um, you know, with WWE. And it wasn't until I got, out into the independence, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna wrestle the way I want to because everyone's telling me how to wrestle. It's not working. When I when I quit giving a crap, and I started calling in the ring, and I was like, you know, this is what we're gonna do. It worked. And, and, it's, and, and, that, and, that, and if I quit anything, when I open up my school, because I can teach these kids. Look, I'm not. You're not coming here for me to get you in shape. I'm not here to put you on a diet. I'm not here to make to hold your hand. I'm here to teach you how to work. Right. Regis, we're going to start wrapping up this thing and, and, and uh, appreciate both of y'all and so much insight and, and so many stories that we will tap into as we go forward. But uh, Charlie, what, what, uh, as we wrap up this inaugural podcast here, uh, just kind of laying the groundwork for wrestling's greatest podcast uh, at the Haas pod, what would you uh, like to say as we wrap up here today? But I want, like, um, I think this is a great, this is a great, inaugural podcast um you're gonna see a lot of emotion you're gonna see things that get me um get me upset things that uh that enlighten me um we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we are going to as we grow we're gonna grow as a family 
the hostile nation. There's going to be blood. There's going to be sweat. There's going to be tears. Um, there's going to be smiles. There's going to be good times. There's going to be bad times. There's going to be times when we have to say goodbye to people we love and welcome people that were just met into the world. Um, so we're going to, and that's in all aspects of life and not just the pro wrestling. Um, what I want to do is I want to embrace both amateur and pro wrestling. And, I, and it's a great to be a fan of both. And I want to bring them together. So we're one family. Like Sister Sledge said, baby, we are family. And remember out there, it's, you, know, you don't start wrestling until you're put in an uncomfortable position. And I, it's, I hope you learn from our podcast that we're all going through uncomfortable positions and it's uh, our uncomfortable times and that um, we're there for each other. You're only, you know, as long as you've got good people behind you, you can succeed in getting out of those uncomfortable positions. So with that being said, let's finish this up. Well, Charlie, uh, uh, thank you for, for all the insight that you've given us tonight. And uh, Aaron, thank you for, for kind of uh, guiding us and navigating us through the waters of, of this podcast. Uh, I want to I say thank you to you, Charlie. I want to say thank you to uh, Aaron uh, for, for helping bring me along with this. And I hope that we can help grow this into something huge. And I just want to make sure that we we definitely uh, try to get all the followers that we can. So we're on Twitter at the Haas Pod. It's Wrestling's Greatest Podcast. Facebook is Wrestling's Greatest Podcast. If you put in facebook.com slash the Haas Pod, it'll take you to the Wrestling's Greatest Podcast page. If you go to the Haaspod.com, it'll take you to Charlie's website where you can get a cameo done. Um, that's Charlie Haas 54331.com. Um, just share this. Share this with your friends. Share this with people who, who you know like wrestling because I, I feel like this was a really insightful conversation with Charlie, and it was a great way to start the podcast. So um, look forward to more. Uh, you know, we're going to try to do this every week or every couple of weeks. Uh, the the next podcast, Aaron, who do we have coming up? It's going to be an exciting situation. I'm really excited as next week we dive right into amateur wrestling as we'll feature amateur wrestling one podcast and then professional wrestling the next as we come and bring to you mr rick delegata he's a four-time u.s open champion 1980 and 1984 u.s olympic qualifier and a three-time all-american at the university of kentucky uh we're incredibly excited to have him on the program with us as as we'll dive into the world of amateur wrestling as well uh he's the head coach of the nyc the new york uh athletic club and what an incredible guest to have on for our first uh guest is for amateur wrestling and uh, I look forward to that I know we all look forward to that here as we cover the world of professional wrestling as we try to just shine a bright light on the sport that we all love so much I'm Aaron Presley and for Super Tex and Charlie Haas himself thank you for joining us for this first episode and we will see you next time